of over 4,000 carat diamonds can be yours today for the special rock bottom <laughs> I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. Smarter. More aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. Like I could. Take, Take on, on the world. world. Look, Hoagie, it's a hamster. Just what I need for dissection lab tomorrow. I think I need that for the band, Laverne. You know, like we could bite its head off or whatever. Hands off that hamster. Friend of yours, Bernard? He belongs to Weird Ed Edison, and it looks like he's brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that purple tentacles mutated into an insane genius, and Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go... back to the mansion. Okay, we'll spread out commando style. Laverne, you go secure the area behind those double doors. Hoagie, you take care of upstairs reconnaissance. I'll maintain Command HQ here, in the lobby. What are we looking for? We've got to find where Dr. Fred is holding the tentacles. 
This better not take too long. I've got an anatomy final tomorrow. And I've got a show to set up later tonight. If I'm late, I don't get to test the drums. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, where's his secret lab? That one looks like it's from a local hardware store. I'm not leaving this motel until I find those tentacles. Mmm, spearmint, my favorite. It's stuck to the floor. It's permanently attached to the countertop. Nineteen fifty two. There's something funny about that clock. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine! and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river. Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course. That's why I'll have to do it. Yesterday, through the time machine. This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children, the Chronogen. Doc, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive. Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not. This is the first time I've ever tried it on people. Well, I'll be... Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. 
<laughs> die, <laughs> die. We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said Imitation Diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh. Cheap mail order jewels? What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. Maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs! Warning! Output from this device is highly toxic and may cause tyrannical delusions if ingested. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! I've got the plans! Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie! How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them. Yes! Down the toilet! No! Through time! Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time! Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time! Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times, tentacles are taking over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Okay. Come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred? How'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great,
You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. It's the battery plans I'm supposed to give to that Red Edison dude. Mmm, kumquats. If you think I'm something to look at now, just wait! Hi there, mister. Franklin! Ben Franklin! Soon to be known as the inventor of electricity! Uh, do you know Red Edison? He's a scientist guy, too. Red Edison? A scientist? He's just an innkeeper who pretends to be a scientist, and he's not very good at doing either one. I can't believe Washington and Jefferson picked his inn of all places to write our Constitution. Do you mean Washington like President Washington? Did he tell you he was president? The nerve of that guy, always trying to run things. But of course, no one will care who's president once I've harnessed the ultimate power, the power of electricity. <laughs> Shouldn't you say the discoverer of electricity? You think the ultimate power in the universe is just under some rock waiting to be discovered? Ha! Huh. I, Ben Franklin, am going to summon power from the sky by sheer force of genius! I could use a little power myself for my time machine. There will be power enough for all in time. There aren't any time machines yet anyway. That's next summer's project. You are truly whacked, Ben. Huh! <gasps> That's what they said about the man who invented bifocals. Wasn't that you? Good point. Guess they were right. I wonder what Red would say about that. Who cares about that crackpot? I need Red to help me save humanity. So he's a missionary now, eh? Well, why not? Can't be any worse at that than he is at inventing. So where's this red guy at? Down in his secret lab, of course, neglecting his guests. Well, see ya. Carry on. Soon all the power of the heavens will be mine! All mine! If only we had some nasty weather! It's totally covered with crud. Woohoo, the Pony Express. 
It's closed. Woohoo, the Pony Express. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. Cool, the room clerk's a mummy. I'm guessing it conceals the entrance to a secret lab. He seems busy. It's covered with plans and junk. Hey, what is it? You look kind of familiar. Of course I do. I'm Red Edison, the inventor, not to mention owner of this inn. Perhaps you've seen my picture in some important scientific journal. Then again, maybe not. Do you know Ben Franklin? Franklin? <laughs> I would never associate with that overstuffed goofball. He has the stupidest idea about glasses with one red lens and one blue one. What are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? I know an inventor who looks a bit like you. Well, it's not one of my sons, that's for sure. It appears that I, Red Edison, foremost genius of my day, am to be the last in a long line of gifted inventors. My nearly indistinguishable sons have decided that they want to be artists. I think it was Jed's idea. Or is it Ned? Ah, well, the left-handed one at any rate. Must be some sort of bad blood on their mother's side. Well, see you later. You might if you cut that hair a bit shorter. Hmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant design. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. Hey! Only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. I guess this is George Washington's bed. I bet it calls the butler just like on TV. Here I am, don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess! The late Max Addox. His petard runneth over. A lamentable fate for such a patriotic dude. I 
told you guys I'll get to the flag next. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, chill. Take your time. Don't tell me you've got another design change for the flag. I've got another design change for the flag. I knew it. What's the current brainstorm from our fickle founding fathers? How about a skull with, like, scorpions in its mouth? Oh, what the heck. At this point, I'd do anything just to have it over with. Put the pattern on the table, and I'll look at it when I'm done with this job. Stars and stripes, dull, dull, dull. Hey, don't criticize unless you got a better idea. Gosh, I'd never want to mess with history. Chateau de Chipo, 1775. I don't quite see how it can fly. Hey, what's that on the plans? It looks like a secret backwards message. Oh, it's just a coffee stain. Looks like he spent a lot of time in there. Nah, there's printer's ink on the sheets. A horse is a horse, of course. It looks like someone's dentures were in here. Hey, I've got to put them somewhere. Uh, hi, horsey. Oh, hi, yourself. Wow, you can talk. Wow, so can you. What a coincidence. I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Well, if you want to put it that way. Is this some kind of a trick? I don't do magic. I'm just a horse. What's a nice horse like you doing in a place like this? Hey, I live here. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get back to the future and save the world. The future, huh? And I thought that Franklin guy was off his nut. Nice teeth. Thanks. I paid quite a bit for them. Well, I gotta go. See you later. Question is, which one's stuffed and which one's the real McCoy? I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither one of us McCoys. We are Edisons, Ned and Jed. Who's who? Does it really matter? Even our dear father can't tell us apart. He only knows that one of us is left-handed while the other is right, but that neither of us are following in his tiny scientific footsteps. Hold still, Jed! So, I'm almost too frightened to ask, are you the marble delivery man? Or the model? I'm no marble delivery man, but rock is my life. <laughs> I'm sure that's terribly amusing, where you're from. Where exactly did you come from? 
the future. Kind of spooky sounding, ain't it? Ooh, the future. I'm from the future. Look out. Gosh, it would be so nice if you weren't here anymore. I'm the model. Should I take my clothes off now? No. No, you most definitely should not. We couldn't get your body shape right anyway, unless we cemented two slabs of marble together. But then your statue would have a big seam in it. That's okay. It would have one anyway. Look, don't call us. We'll call you. Dang. I'm the delivery man, okay, if I unload in here? Actually, we are well supplied with medium, so thank you, no. This ain't medium, it's the extra large stuff. Please go away. We artists are very sensitive to your kind of people. What kind of people? Big, dumb people. Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. It's Ned or Jed's head. That's the left-handed one. I wonder if there's anything to eat in it. These dudes might get mad. What a pretty pussycat. Cats dig these. Yipe! All right, paint! Very Spartan. Where am I gonna put it? Very Spartan. <coughs> Yipe! I can see the roof right outside. It's already open. It's one of those pulley things. It's too complicated for me. It's blocked up with somebody's bed. It's blocked up with somebody's bed. It's just a cold chimney. It's a little cage with a canary in it, perched above a little lever, huh? The Constitutional Convention invites your comments, critiques, amendments to the Constitution. Must have poor circulation. Yo. Hello. What's up, you cold? Cold? I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it.
He's going to give the log to starving children? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George, I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing a... Uh, uh, writing the... We're drafting a constitution for the United States. Don't say draft. You'll only make me colder. Wimp. Well, why don't you put a coat on? I'm wearing a coat, you nitwit. I've even got this blanket which makes me itch and I'm still freezing. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any um, amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any b brilliant ideas? You could guarantee the right to free speech. Hmm, free speech? No, that'll never work. Well, I gotta go, dude. It looks like a martini shaker. Don't touch that, it's government property. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Sorry, I'm saving it. It's going to be a famous log. They don't seem to have gotten too far. You can look, but don't touch. Stolen from the desk of George Washington. Hey, keep your hands off that. He looks oddly familiar. Excuse me. Yes? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. Awesome. Indeed. Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh yes, it's quite true. Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truths, eh? Well... I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there isn't. I only cut down cherry trees. Family tradition, you understand. Cherries only. There's nothing out there but cedar and kumquats. Sometimes I like to eat it raw. Mmm, salad oil. Bitchin'. It's empty.
I hope this wasn't used in the outhouses. The water's all sudsy now. Thank you.